everyone, and welcome to this episode of Tell Us Something That We Don't Know, a serious chat with a comedian. My guest today has gone from being a professional athlete playing in the AFL to becoming a limo driver to the stars and heads of state. He has done such things as drive backwards up a one-way street to get rid of a possible assassin on the bottom of his car, to ordering Louis Vuitton to close down so that the Sultan of Johor could go shopping. He also intervened to make sure that Pink, the singer, would have no problems getting into Malaysia. He was a personal driver for John Farnham, Flo Rida, Sultan of Johor, King of Malaysia, Admiral of the USS, Carl Vincent, the Prince of Qatar, Celine Dion, Tom Jones, and many other people that we actually can't name because of gag orders. What I found interesting was that he didn't just drive his clients around, but more often than not, that would rely on him to go over and above the beyond of Call of Duty. Peter Valenti, welcome to my podcast. How are you, mate? Thanks, Joe. But uh, you forgot the biggest star, and that's that? Joe Avardi. <laughs> <laughs> you started already, mate. Yeah. And I forgot to tell you, he's a smart ass, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. <laughs> now, you started driving around uh, couples, right? You started to drive around like uh, you know, the brides or grooms to the to the church. I mean, I know we're going to get into some really juicy stories here about some famous people, but um, before we get into that, tell us some of the things that happened, you know, because I know you saved a few brides, didn't you, in your time? Oh, definitely. We, we've got a couple of stories. Like uh, yeah. the, the first one, you know, we had this bride, we, uh, myself and my wife were driving, uh, 59 yeah. Cadillacs, and uh, she had yellow flowers that had uh, were wet off the bouquet and had stained. The, the, the bride? The bride, So yes. the bride's in the back? In the yeah. back. and Holding she, a, bouquet, a set of bouquet. Yeah, a bouquet that's of correct. Flowers. Yeah, so uh, she's leaning them on, on her on her stomach yeah. while we're driving. And yeah. I happened to look in the rearview mirror and mm -hmm. uh, see that there was a massive yellow stain right in the middle of her dress. So she's freaked out, of course. And uh, so luckily, uh, my wife Tanya had... Uh, a uh, like an emergency kit of cleaning like like water with uh, laundry detergent in it and uh, we, we spent probably 15 minutes cleaning the dress and then to dry it because we're only oh, a couple of k's from the church we had two bridesmaids sit either side of her and then open all the windows and literally have their hands outside of the uh, of the windows you know as a big sail and then uh, we got her to the church on time and she was dry which was a you know which was, uh, <laughs> and then they did a write up for us in a massive, in one of the, the big Australian that's, magazines. That's pretty cool. Good. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yep. Any other stories? What was it? You said you had a second one? And the second one is probably the best one. We, we picked up a bride uh, from a place called Byford in Western Australia, which is uh, sort of mid uh, um, country. And yeah. we had a roughly about an hour drive to the, to the ceremony. And uh, she decided to have. Uh, Two bottles of champagne to herself, and she hadn't eaten. So in the car, in the car, in the oh, car, because we had the stretch limo at the time, and and yeah. uh, she uh, decided to drink the champagne. No one told me. So when I got out of the car to open the door, she actually fell out of the car because she was so <laughs> drunk. And uh, the her poor father, who was quite old, he couldn't lift her up. So I, I ended up lifting her up and helping him, and and. Uh, I ended up being part of their wedding because I had to help her walk down the aisle with him on one side, myself on the other, and but, I, all but, I could hear. Were people just looking at you? Going, yeah, everyone was, was looking, going, "Who's this bloke?" <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm actually the best part of it. I'm in all their wedding photos, so that's even better. <laughs> <laughs> so that's some crazy stuff. I'm sure you've seen some other things, but we won't go into that uh, because we we've got a lot to talk about now. The reason why I've got you on here is because, uh, you know, you've been my driver for many years now. And, and I should say that uh, Peter is based in Perth. And we've been on many, many long journeys over the, over the time. And, uh, you know, you've had so, so many great, interesting stories. And I felt I just have to get you on here because I can't tell them like you tell them. And I don't think people would believe this kind of stuff. And, and, and it's kind of uh, what, what you've done is, is sort of like a uh, behind the scenes sort of a feel you know and and i was always fascinated by it and i hope the listeners are as well so let's start at the beginning how do you go from being a professional athlete to being like the you know the the, the go-to guy for, for famous hollywood stars and heads of state well it basically all started with uh with chogham which is uh the commonwealth 
heads of government meeting which was held in Perth and yep. basically we had a whole heap of um, leaders from around the world arrive and, and I applied for the for the job as as a driver and uh, got the job and, and I was lucky enough to get the Nigerian president which is uh, his name is good luck Jonathan so uh, <laughs> great what, name what, do we know why they call him good luck Jonathan? Uh, that's what the name that he was given so they had right. some nice crazy names and uh, yeah, so I uh, drove out to the airport and yep. uh, I actually didn't know, never didn't know who he was, anything like that. And yep. uh, of course had uh, Australian Federal Police sitting there waiting for me and yep. uh, picking him up from the plane and was and waiting for him to come out. They said, have you, have you had all the training? I said, no. And they said, well, we're going to have to give you like 15 minutes of uh, training on how to get out of a situation. <laughs> so well, because uh, just to, a bit of a background, the the... Uh, good luck Jonathan was actually at the time probably you know there was, there was a lot of uh, attempts to assassinate him that's there? right that's right he was uh, yeah. he was did always on the this? radar sorry did you know this did you know this I had no idea I was just told to go out and pick him up so um, then we had uh, of course uh, you know I've never done anything like that and uh, we had an Australian federal policeman sitting in the front and teaching me yep. how to how to reverse at, at, right. at high speed and then flick the car around and take off. <laughs> so what, what do you mean? Like in the movies? No, in the movies, exact same thing. So, um, you know, I was just basically chucked in at the deep end and uh, and taught. We literally had 15 minutes and we were practicing on the runway of the airport. So what, just you're, you're driving the car and then you've just got to pull the handbrake, what, pull the handbrake up? Pull the, the handbrake, around. spin the car and then uh, and then it just accelerate. And it's it's... It's not as easy as it sounds. <laughs> it's uh, it's, uh, it's it's got to be quite a, a really sort of full motion of like handbrake, brake, then accelerate, then get out of there. You know, it's uh, it's all about timing. And what the hell were you thinking? Like when you went, okay, you're thinking, okay, I'm going to pick this guy up from the airport. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm the limo driver. I'm going to drive him probably back to his hotel. And then all of a sudden, you're confronted with with you know the Australian Federal Police explaining all these kind of moves to you like isn't there a part of you that's going oh, i should be charging more like for yeah well, like, <laughs> i was trying to work out what i was doing there life, <laughs> it was pretty scary like it, for me as you know coming driving weddings to driving him it was uh it was just a completely different you know um a thing for me in in, in my life and what, what was he like did you well, speak to him very quiet um yeah. but you know he brought his wife along who yeah. who uh she, uh, her name was Patience, right. and she had none. She, she just complained the whole time that she was in the car, you know. So, uh, but uh, well, he was a lovely at, man. Did, at any time, did you actually feel a threat though? Like that there were there were the times where they, they like what, what what else did they teach you? Did you have to put it sort of into action? What yeah, happened? we had to put it into action. So basically, um, if anyone knows Perth, it, it it to get from the international airport to the city is probably a yeah. twenty minute drive. Yeah, uh, we made it in eight in eight minutes um all the all the um the lights were were shut off for us so we could get a full run and they basically taught us to uh you had to literally stay you know one to two meters from the car in front you don't touch the brakes and uh you vary your speed like every couple of seconds you know at one stage i looked down at the at the uh speedo and i was doing 180 down the main highway of, of, of perth into the city and then you slow down to 60 and, and you're just having to judge the car in front you know, and that's a convoy of probably uh, 10 to 12 cars. And, and what was the purpose of, of speeding up and slowing down? What... But because if there's snipers, um, you know, I mean, this guy's right. a, a major threat. So yeah. um, the sniper can't get a good read on him like if they're trying to get to him. Yeah, so that's that's what it was. It was just uh, it's more a security thing, you know. But but the scariest part of the whole thing wasn't what's going to happen outside. It was what was sitting inside next to me, you know, which was which a what? Australian federal policeman with a machine gun like locked and loaded ready to go <laughs> so so they were essentially his bodyguards or did he bring his own body so he bought his like, so federal police are in the car and he also yep. had his own bodyguards which had arrived earlier um right. and there was three of them um yep. which uh were meant to be carried or well, they weren't meant to be carrying but uh I, I saw one of them had a gun on him so they you know i don't know how they got it through but they got it through right <laughs> So you had three big burly security Yeah, about guns. seven foot. I think they're around seven foot tall, all three yeah. of them. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. so uh, all religious, you know, Abraham, Moses, and, and I think John was one of them. So, uh, but, 
But look, really nice people. And, and did anything actually happen? Were you like did, any of the time that he was here that you were driving him around? Did, did you know? Did you have to put any of that kind of stuff into practice? What yeah. Doing? So we we um, we were in Fremantle. Um, yeah. They had a meeting down in Fremantle, and there was a. Yeah. I was I'd just come into a one way street, and mm-hmm. uh, there was a protest because they knew he was there. <laughs> and uh, so we ended up, um, someone jumped on the front of the bonnet of the car. And uh, I, first thing was I freaked out because I didn't know what to do. And then, then literally the training kicked in straight away and uh, just put the car in reverse like I was taught and, and basically zigzag, zigzag backwards down a street trying to get this guy off the front. And then finally I flicked him off. We, we flicked him off and, uh, and just took off at, you know, we we're just doing high speeds because... Uh, it was probably one of the only times we didn't have the Australian Federal Police with us. You know, we had his own security in the car. Wow. Yeah, Pretty so. scary stuff. Yeah, the heart rate was up there. <laughs> it was a good fun, but well, after it, you can sort of laugh at it. But while it was happening, it wasn't very, it wasn't much fun. Yeah, right. And, and, and uh, anything else like that happen along the way? Um, not really. I mean, it was just, um, you know, he, he, it was just always a threat for us, you know, just always concentrating what was happening with him. So, did, you know. Do you actually know why anyone wanted to kill him? Do you um, know what he actually did? He, he just, people don't like him because he's basically taking money out of the country, you know. He, uh, he, he even tells me the story, which is, which is quite interesting. Like his, his, he must have had a compound in Nigeria. Right. And uh, he, he, uh, he always told me that when he would drive out of his driveway, they used to push a screen across the road that was like a plastic, so he couldn't see, because yeah. all the poor people were on the right-hand side. So he always turned left out of his compound. Wow. Yeah. So that's the sort of person yeah. he was. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's it's quite sad, really, when you think about it. It is, isn't it? But you know, th- this is what's always fascinated me about spe- speaking to you is that you've you've had a. Uh, an insight into because you know I think that I mean I know that I've done this like I, I did it with you after a, a while that we've been driving together you know you, you develop a trust right you develop a trust for for you know the driver and then you know I'm sure that these people would do the same right oh definitely and so, yeah. so that they open up and you know you, you have an insight into into other people's lives now I know you've driven around a lot of Hollywood stars what can you tell us can you I know you, you're sort of bound by gag orders as well aren't you some yeah yeah a lot so, of people you can't tell us who they are but you can tell us some stories for sure yeah like you? one of the people that I can't talk about but uh she has 250 about 254 255 uh, Instagram followers million um, million. million 250 yeah yeah million right. <laughs> and, and yeah. her ex-husband has about I think 10 million Insta right. followers um yeah. so you can probably guess who that is but uh right. Um, on her, on the rider sheet, um, actually before I go on, the, the husband who everyone thinks is, is an asshole is, is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet really down to earth. And, um, so she's flown in, uh, we, we had the rider, um, for what she wanted. We couldn't get the, it was like a spring water that she wanted out of America. So what happens like, so her management would get in contact with you uh, and say, this is what we want. Well, why are you organizing? Why is so, the driver organizing the mineral water? So basically, we, like myself, um, that's what makes me a little bit different to everybody else. Um, I I basically take control of security, all that sort of anything that that they need to do. uh, That's me. Oh, if they've uh, apart from accommodation and stuff, which Mm -hmm. I'd also do, but for them, I didn't have to. So um, we make sure if they've got babies, they have baby chairs, all that sort of stuff in the car as well. So uh, anything like that. But uh, yeah, she she. she, we had Evian water in the car for her and right. uh, was complaining. you couldn't get she, the water that she wanted on her ride. Yeah, we couldn't get it because no one, no one imported it into Australia. So right. um, the husband... Do you, remember, fl- do you remember what water it was? Oh, I wouldn't even have a clue. Okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it wasn't that right. important to me. <laughs> I, I, I just, I'm, I'm a stickler for details. Yeah, so anyway, yeah. So um, there's some special spring water, but we couldn't get it in Australia. Uh, I rang around to about 20 or 30 importers. They, they had nothing. So... Yeah. We thought, well, Evian's the next best thing. Well, yeah, um, there's nothing wrong with Evian. Yeah, it's, it's quite good. So she, you know, she uh, didn't like it and then said that uh, that the husband had his uh, private jet was sitting out at the uh, out at the international airport, you yeah. know, at the private jet company. So she said, oh, I think there's some water out there that uh, on his plane. So yeah. I said, all right, no worries. So I went out and I got a 24-pack yeah. of this water. Yeah. And... Uh, bring it back, chill it for her, put it in the car, and she literally drank that much of it. 
<laughs> not even not even one bottle. She took a sip and that was it for the whole weekend. That's just ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah. So they're the sort of demands, but you just do it with a smile, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and have you ever had anyone being like really arrogant or rude to you? Um, yeah, we had uh, Gina Reinhart, which you know is a mining magnate here in Perth, and yeah, you know, well, but, she's uh, Australia's richest woman, right? That's exactly right. But yeah. uh, gee, she's good looking. She's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I'd date her. I was, no. <laughs> I was blindsided by the number of zeros. Oh, yeah, 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 that. that's right. She's a stunning woman. But yeah. um, so, so what happened with her? So with her, um, we rocked up and uh, the uh, she basically gets in the car in my Mercedes and, mm-hmm. uh, and I, you know, I turn around like I do all of them, say, you know, good morning and how are you? And she basically just looked at me dead straight in the eye and goes don't talk to me just drive and that was it end of conversation didn't talk to her ever again <laughs> for the whole trip it was just oh, i was just quite rude you know but she she's does a lot you know she she's the one that yeah out of our i know someone in adelaide that looks after her and mm. uh they turned up with a range rover that was about a, a year old yeah and she complained that it was uh wasn't new enough so they had that they drove a, a brand new one from the range rover um a dealership in melbourne to her in adelaide and was sitting there the next morning waiting for her so that's the sort of person she is wow oh well you know i suppose money doesn't buy you uh niceties in class what you also work for paul mccartney yes i was i was um i was paul mccartney's backup driver and uh so uh, well, I was, thank God you didn't wear his backup singer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I have heard you sing, I know. <laughs> Don't talk. <laughs> I into that one. I um, into that one. Yeah. <laughs> but no, nah, he. Um, I was his backup driver because I was looking after another client that weekend. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but hey, look, I, I was introduced to him just because if I had to drive, you know, he had to know who I was, and yeah. And uh, we, we, you know, I got to meet him. And, but what really amazed me about him was his security. Like, he would have had probably 12 to 15 security people around him. At any one time? At any one time. And I don't know why, but it's just I, I, whether he's had threats, you know. We, we're not mm. told that sort of stuff. So it's, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's very interesting. Yeah. And you've worked with a lot of sports stars as well. You, you, you uh, drove around the Manchester United legends yeah so we we you know that's a funny story i looked after they they played a game here in perth against the uh socceroos the legend soccero team and uh i looked at i was had uh uh, dwight york and paul skulls i think his name is and um they were quite hungry so they they looking for some food so i Uh, I said what do you feel like after the game or before the game no this is before the game so um because it wasn't, it wasn't a uh, like it was just a friendly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we, uh, so we're driving along, and they saw Hungry Jacks, which they they thought, which is Burger King, I guess, to them. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they said, "Oh, let's pull in there." And I said, "Are you sure you want to stop in a you know Hungry Jacks?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we pull in the Hungry Jacks, and they literally walk in. This place is packed because it was a sad day, and um, everyone knew who they were, <laughs> and the place just went silent. It was like a TV show, you know, like, like you walk into a bar and <laughs> it was just like, and they just ordered some Whoppers and, and, and everyone just went dead silent. But the funny thing was, the only person who didn't know who they were was the guy serving them. <laughs> it's just like, you know, it was just it was just the funniest thing, you know, but uh, they had a bit of a laugh, so it was good. Now, one guy you can tell us about is Flo Rider, the rapper from Miami. Well, what was his story? So he flew in. Um, there's a Russian, a Russian guy here, entrepreneur that flew him yep. in for his wedding. Yep. And uh, so we, I had to pick him up, and and mm-hmm. uh, he, uh, yeah, wouldn't talk to me. Didn't want to know me. Just dead set would just talk through his manager to me. So he, you know, anything what, like he wanted, in the car. In the car. So he's literally standing, sitting right behind me, but he yeah. wouldn't talk to me. He talked to his manager, who then would talk to me. Like, and what would he say? What would he say? To oh, he's just manager? asking me, oh, you know, can you turn the air con up? Can you do, turn the radio down? You know, all that sort of stuff. That so, is just bizarre, isn't and, it? And they're I, sitting I, right there. I, I just find that, you know, like, I don't care who you are. You're another human being. Yeah. You, you, you're an issue. You're a metre away, and, and you can't even... That is just bizarre. Anyway, continue. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, 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 you know, we, he, he did the wedding on the, on the Saturday night. And so, so, so the, the Russian millionaire, whatever, flew him in flew to him perform in at his wedding. To perform at his wedding. So, yeah, uh, right. 
Okay. Um, yeah, that was, you know, which is, I, I'd, I'd hate to think what that even cost. But uh, so he came in with a bit of an entourage. Anyway, um, at the at the wedding, he's he had a $300,000 watch on, which was all right. gold and diamonds. Yeah. And it broke. Right. So um, he his manager, Zach, who was about, he was a seven foot two um, NFL player who was about 250 kilos, <laughs> comes out to me and goes, I need to fix this watch. And I'm looking at this watch going, oh, I have no idea where I'm going to take it. So I went into King Street, which is sort of like our, our you know, Louis Vuittons and all that sort yeah, of stuff yeah. there. So yeah. I thought there's got to be someone there. Went in there and uh, went into a watch place there, um, which had a had a special security door. You couldn't just walk in. You had to be mm-hmm. buzzed in and, and all that yeah. sort of stuff. Walk in with this watch and they're just looking at me like, where did this come from? Because it was, you know, it was a big watch. Yeah. And uh, I said, look, it's just snap. We need it fixed. And they... 10 minutes later they came out that'll be ten dollars it was just a ten dollar pin right. so um i gave back to zach said i actually i didn't even charge him for it i said look yeah. I'll do it. it doesn't bother me you know 10 yeah. bucks anyway gave it back to him and from that as soon as he put that he got that watch back i was his yeah. best mate you know right i got invited to parties can you tell us about some of these parties this is what we want to know oh you know, look, the, juicy the, stuff. I mean, the parties we one of the parties we went to he uh he made me organise two stretch limos because he picked up, uh, what did we have, about 18, 19 girls that he, he picked up and they're all going back to his hotel for a bit of fun. So... <laughs> what, 18, 19 girls and him? And him, yep, yep. He doesn't like to share. So <laughs> he, uh, so we, we organised these limos. Well, where did he pick them up from? At, at this party. <laughs> it, it, it was amazing. They were just throwing themselves at him. You know, it was because uh, he's quite a big guy. He's huge, you know. Right. So, so um, are you? Yeah, but he was bigger than me. Right. Mind you, he's probably steroids. Not, not. <laughs> I'm natural. <laughs> Rightio. <laughs> so he's gone to this place, picked up these eighteen, nineteen girls. You two stretch limos back to his. Yep, back to his hotel. hotel. Did you get an invite in? I got invited, but you know, being married and, and being in Perth, there's no way I was going up there. <laughs> I was a good right. boy. Okay. <laughs> Right. Good Italian boy, and, and 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 what else did you see with him? Oh, look, we had because he he would have come in on his private jet, right? He came in with his private jet, so um, you know they had this uh, this. I always remember there was a Ferrari bag. It was a little like a handbag sort of thing that yeah. I wasn't allowed to touch, and uh, I, to this day I still don't know what was in it. I, I think I know what was in it, but well, I uh, think I did too. With eighteen girls, it was probably be Viagra, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Dunas. But no, no, it's just... Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you would have seen a lot of stuff, um, you know, like going out and picking people up, uh, you know, at, the, at their jets. You would have seen a lot, because, like, there's a whole... There's this whole... I, I've been on a private jet a couple of times, uh, and and there's not many checks, is there? People don't really check you that much. You would have seen all sorts of stuff coming in. So, you? yeah, border security don't really check... They only check passports. That's all they right. really check. The, the luggage... I don't think I've ever seen it get checked. Right. So, kind of, can you tell us the kind of things that you've seen? Oh, look, I've seen guns come in. I've seen millions what do you mean, like of guns, dollars. Or, a cache of guns or what? Yeah, yeah like a, a briefcase of of uh, one of those steel cases with. Um, yeah. I, I know it had it had a, a couple of Glocks in it, so um, the Glock handguns. So, um, and are these are these from uh, security guards of of heads of state? Are they so these are for heads know, of state bodyguards uh, of, of rock stars? Who? No, these are more heads of state. So wow. uh, technically, they're not allowed to have them on them, but a, a lot of them, I'm sure, a lot of them bring them in. So, uh, but you know, I, I've seen God probably hundreds of millions of dollars of cash come through as well. You know, for what? Oh, just people <laughs> buying stuff here in Perth. You know, like <laughs> Perth's a great place, like good to spend some money. So. You know, they, um, and there's other stuff that I can't, I, I, I gather I know what's there, but I can't talk about it, so. Yeah, fair enough, okay, I, can, I, don't, I, mean, I want you to incriminate yourself, but like, who, who are some of these people that, are you allowed to tell us who brings in the cash? Some yeah, people? yeah, so like, probably my biggest client, which yeah. uh, I have had for seven years, which is the mm-hmm. Sultan of Johor, and, right. uh, and his son, uh, mm-hmm. the Crown Prince, right. so he's next in line, but I look after the whole family, so. So the Crown Prince, he's the son of the king of malaysia right? that's correct yeah 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 right and so what can you tell us about these guys so he <laughs> he when he flies in he brings an entourage of about 50 people we have we have who the the, the sultan or the, the, the crown prince the son crown prince, so, the son right uh, yeah so he he always has you know all the hangers on and 
all his security. He has about two cars worth of security that follow him. So, right. uh, cause he runs the military over there. So in Malaysia, so, right. uh, but you know, he, he, you know, he owns his own soccer team, um, in Johor, which yeah. I think they're eight years in a row they've won. So, <laughs> and well, uh, I don't think they've got a choice. No, I don't, you know, think, I don't think the op- opposing team has any choice but to win. No, that's right, exactly. And that's but, the funny but, part. But, but to lose, sorry, but to lose because uh, you know you don't want the military after you. So no, no, that's you, right. Don't you score mean, that penalty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, what, what can, before you talk about these guys, can you give us an idea of the level of wealth that they have? Uh, so. Uh, the Sultan is worth roughly, I think, forty billion dollars, um, but that is growing. That grows all the time with his investments around the world. He owns a lot of property. Uh, he owns the Botanic Gardens in Singapore. He lent, he he leases that to to them for a dollar a year for ninety nine years. Right. Oh, that's nice of him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he owns it, so once it's, I think it's, it's not far away from being up, like, because he, his grandfather did that as well, so it's sort of right. come down the line. Yeah. But cars, they, they, they cars, all that kind yeah, of stuff. cars, they have, uh, between the Crown Prince and his father, they have around 800 cars. So, you know, they have my, they have my Ferraris, they, they have, you know, I've all, they've always said to me, if you ever come, we'll take, they've got their own racetrack, so... They've always said they'll take me out in their LaFerrari and their Bugatti Veyrons and everything else they've got. So yeah, right. You know, and, and so and, and so, tell us a little bit more about the Crown Prince before we get to the, the Sultan. Yeah, so the Crown Prince. I mean, he, you know, he's a bit of a tough guy. His first trip here that he ever came um, to Perth was it was it was quite bad because I'm waiting. I've never met him. It was the first yeah. time he arrived in Perth, and mm-hmm. I'm waiting at the aircraft, and I, I see him come out of the out of the plane, and he's just aggro like he's really angry mm. and I, I couldn't work out what was going on and, and so he got in the car and he's, he's talking to his wife and in the end he said that he, he goes who are you and I said oh, I'm, I'm Peter mm-hmm. I said I drive your father and then his whole his whole persona just changed so, so let, let's take a step back here okay because I think we've probably gone ahead of ourselves here in the timeline so you drove his father first the, the dad came first yes yes and how do you get the job of you know, being their personal driver for the last seven years. I mean, how, how does that happen? Yeah, let's, so, let's go back there for a second. Yeah, so I I, uh, I had a Cadillac Escalade um, SUV, and uh, we had uh, I was sitting at the Hyatt Hotel where the where the mm-hmm. Sultan. I didn't know he was there. I didn't know who he was at the time, yeah. and I was just sitting there waiting for my client. And this yeah. this small gentleman comes up to me and goes. Uh, Oh, I love the car, and I said, "Oh, thank you." He goes, "You'll be well, driving by himself, me. by himself, by himself, no security, no, no nothing." Really? Yeah. Okay. So his security was around, but they yeah. weren't, you know, they weren't with him at the time. Yeah. Right. And then, uh, of course, we had. Uh, he came up to me and said, um, "I'm just going to let you know you'll be driving me around for the next seven days." And, and I said, uh, "I can't. I've got a client. I'm waiting for." He goes, "Too bad. Organize something else. You're going to be taking me for the next seven days." <laughs> And you're probably thinking, who the hell is this yeah, guy, right? I had no idea who he was. And yeah. uh, so then, of course, his security came over. They took my name and everything like that. Wanted to know, mm-hmm. you know, I, I gather they were doing checks on me. Yeah. And uh, they, they came up, they saw that I, what I'd done, and the rest is history. So that's how I got the father. So I spent seven days with him. Right. So from that day onwards, I've looked after him every time he comes into Perth. Okay, so then, of course, then he goes home. He says, next time you get to his son, next time you've got to go to Perth, this is the guy who's got to drive you around. That's correct, yeah, because they, 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 they like that level of trust. It's a trust thing for them, you know, once they get to know me. But, you, I mean, look, I, I know you, you're a nice guy. You know, you, you, I mean, you're, you know, you're a fairly tall and pretty solid guy. Um, you know, you don't look too dangerous, but, you know, I'd, I'd like to have you on my side if I got into a fire, that's for sure. But... You don't like how, how would he how, how does this establish his how did he know that you weren't an idiot you know who's going to annoy the hell out of him yeah driving well him I, I guess he would have made that decision in the first you know couple of minutes that he's in the car i i know with these sort of people you don't talk to them unless you're spoken to you know and uh yeah, right. and that's what it's always been like and uh you know but it, it's just the trust thing's massive and uh you know i mean with him um, one of the stories with him was that he, you know, he doesn't have much patience, and <laughs> he's another one. He's not very patient. Doesn't like driving around for a long time, you know. 
And uh, this is this is the the father. This is the father. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, let, let, save that story because I want to I want to talk about the prince first. Right, his son. All right. Yeah, then, yeah. then we'll get to the dad. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So so the, he says to his son, when you get to uh, Perth, this is the guy who's got to drive you around. Do you drive him around Australia as well? Any other parts of Australia? Yeah. So the princes, the the brothers mm-hmm. of the crown prince, um, yeah. I I look after them as well, and. Right. Uh, a few years ago, they flew me up to or to Sydney. They were going yeah. to Bathurst, and uh, I got flown in to drive them around. Like yeah. I, I, I don't know Sydney that well, so I had to fly in a bit earlier and uh, and do a bit of reconnaissance. I, I just hired a little car and and spent two or three days just driving around and, and sussing the place out. So I knew where I was going once they got there. You right, know, yeah. Okay, and then so we you spent do that for weekend yep. at Bathurst. Yeah, and 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 uh, and what was he like? So the Crown Prince, you know, cool bloke. Yeah, really nice bloke. Like very. Once he'd calmed down, he was okay. But but why did why was he upset? You didn't finish that because story. yeah. So what what had happened was one of the border security uh, ladies that was on board. Um, yeah. So they told him, check his passport. Yeah, he was checking his passport, and he what had happened was he stood up and she basically said, "Sit down until yeah. I've finished with you." Right. And he sort of said, "Do you understand who I am?" You know, and uh, she didn't care, and she said, y- "You could be a terrorist for all I know." You know, and that upset him quite a bit. So um, the funny part was he didn't know who she was. And I, when his plane arrived, he's got a, a black private jet, it's just all black. And I'd actually taken a photo, but I had her in the picture, which right. I didn't even realise I hadn't. She was in the photo. Yeah. So um, I, I, he told me what had happened, and I was going through my photos that night, and I said, "Is this the lady?" You know, mm-hmm. and he goes, "Yeah, that's her. That's her." So he rang uh, the Australian consulate in Malaysia, who then rang. Australia um, and found out who she was and she was sacked within 24 hours. Wow. So that's that's the sort of person he is, you know. Yeah, but, it's pretty dumb. I mean, terrorists don't... Yeah, you don't, and you don't say that to, to the Crown Prince of Malaysia. <laughs> you don't normally see terrorists sitting in the plane. They're usually driving. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know. and, and so, I mean, he's obviously a very powerful guy. Have you seen a lot of that kind of stuff? Yeah, seen, you know, I mean, a couple of things. Like he, he uh, they're building a new stadium in Johor and... He wanted to see our new stadium, so I had to basically ring around and work out he so wanted the, to... The Optus Opti Stadium? The Optus Stadium, yep, yep. Yeah, so he, for those people who are listening around the world, the Optus Stadium is our probably the, the, the latest state-of-the-art uh, stadium built in Australia, isn't it? It sure is, it, yeah. It is. Well, I, I haven't been in it. I've seen it on TV. It's, it's, a, it's a, a wonderful spectacle. Um, so, yeah, so he's building something like that. So he's, he's, Yeah, he's, he's built... He's actually just finished building it, but he uh, he wanted to see what the lighting and everything was, and, and I... I ended up working out who to speak to so i got hold of the the guy that runs off the stadium and he yeah. he got us into the middle of the stadium and they actually put on a full light show for him and uh you know like it was like it was a concert and he just loved it you know and that's i guess that's where we became good friends because i he could see now that i was i'd do anything for him you know yeah right and it, it, was this the guy mistaken from wrong who who was a big pink fan yeah, no, so his wife, the princess, so she's right. she's the, uh, that was the other story. So yeah. when they were staying at the Crown, um, yeah. Pink happened to be at, in Perth as well, staying at the Crown. Yeah. So uh, his the princess asked me, can you tee up a meeting? And I said, look, I'll try. So I, I rang his, so I, I worked out, I found out who, who was doing security for, for Pink. I spoke yeah. to the security. They said, no, you can't organise it. So then I found out who a tour manager was. I spoke to him. He said, there's no way in the world. And this went on for a good couple of hours. So I went back to the, the Crown Prince and his wife and I said, look, unfortunately, she doesn't want to meet with you. And he goes, that's all right, Peter. He said, you go back to that tour manager and tell him that if he doesn't meet or she doesn't, if Pink doesn't meet with us, um, I will cancel her visa into Malaysia, which was the next, the next, part, next part of her tour. He said, I will cancel her visa into Malaysia and she won't be allowed in there. And within, I think, five minutes, we're on our way, heading over to the, her room to have a cup of coffee. <laughs> and, oh, so you were in there as well? I went in there, I met her, and uh, yeah. and he, and she, because I said to her, oh, you know, thank you for meeting, I know it's hard, yeah. and, you know, and she was sort of like, well, you know, it's not a problem. And I said, well, it yeah. sounded like it, because I, I, I spoke to your security and your tour manager, and he, he basically told us it wasn't possible, and... Uh, and she just got, and she just looked at the look that she she shot him was like an an Italian grandmother <laughs> at her husband. You know, it was it was the best look, and it was. Uh, but that's that's the sort of pull he has. You know, yeah. Because you've got a habit of getting people into trouble, don't you? Yeah, yeah, Pink's, yeah. Pink's manager, 
You got the girl sacked <laughs> from border security. Hey, that's what I do. <laughs> Hang around with me, you'll be fine. <laughs> and so then, so uh, so your major sort of client is is the crown prince's father, father, right? the sultan. Yes, yeah. yes, okay. yeah. So he, so he's, he's the, the one. Of, so let me get this right because I'm a bit confused. He's the king of Malaysia, but he's also known as the sultan of the Shavu. sultan. So right? what happens in Malaysia uh, every five years? The yeah. a sultan becomes the king. So. Right. Uh, they swap it over every five years. So yeah, at right. the at the moment, he's the king. So, yeah. um, and I think it finishes in a couple of years. But uh, yeah, so he he you know he he's very demanding, like really demanding. But um, we we get on, you know. Like when when he's when we're around other people, I have to call him His Majesty. But when uh, when he's no no one's around, it, it, I call him Boss. He, he wants to be yeah, called right. Boss. So yeah, right, okay. You know. Well, I, I remember once I was touring in. Um, in, in Perth, I was doing some shows there, and uh, you said to me, "Look, I'm not sure if I can drive you around because you're on 24 hour call, right?" That's correct. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Always got yeah. my always got my pants on, ready to go. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. So a car's always got to be clean. You just that's the thing. It's not just just the driving. He he expects the car to be like it's been detailed every time, yeah. even if it's raining. The car gets dried, and if it, it you know when we get back, and then when we go back out again, doesn't too bad it gets wet. Yeah, right. So that's the kind of stuff that you have to do, right? In, in between, yeah. I mean, you could have you could have told him, "Hey, I got to pay his son, or here I got to pick yeah, up." Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> but the funny the funny thing is, Joe, that the yeah. Crown Prince knows you. He's he's heard your he's heard your. Uh, what do you mean? Your, he's heard he's heard of you, and he knew. And, and I was laughing because I never thought he would know who you are. But um, well, how, how do you know this though? Because he told me we were talking. Because I, I I think you'd been to Perth one. Uh, you'd just been to Perth and. Um, I told him who like that I'd looked after you, right? And um, he was actually it was because we were ordering Italian food, and he, right. we got on the subject. See, yeah, I look after this Italian comedian, you know. And then we got yeah. talking. I was oh, is that is that that guy? And then we started talking. <laughs> and then yeah. I showed him one of your videos, and he knew exactly who you were. <laughs> so you're famous <laughs> really in cool. Malaysia. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I had that I had no idea about that. That's yeah, cool. yeah. So that was that was a bit of a shock to me because I don't. Yeah. He, but he he gets it, you know. He gets yeah. what you do. Oh, that's what's well, cool. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that you know his dad is an uh, ethnic dad. <laughs> like, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> throw sandals and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, so okay, so go back to the dad now because because yeah. you've got some interesting stories to talk about. Yeah, so the Sultan. Yeah, so the Sultan. He his trust. He, he basically tested me. The would have been the second day I had him. We were in peak hour traffic, and he just yeah. basically said to me, "Turn around," and he goes, "Peter." So he, is get... he in the car? Is he in the front seat? Is he in the no, back he, seat? No, he's he... in the back seat, so he's uh, opposite me. So I, yep. I sit on the right hand seat, he's sitting on the left hand side in the back seat. Well, diagonally opposite? Yep. Diagonally opposite, yeah. But he yep. talks to me, so it's not a problem, you know? So yeah. he well, just said to me. Better than Jenna Reinhardt, who doesn't. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I've, I've, he goes, Peter, I need you to go to the opposite side of the road. I don't want to mm-hmm. sit in this traffic. And I just said to him, unfortunately, I can't do that. We're not in Malaysia, we don't have a police escort. I said, and I don't want you're my priority. I don't, I don't want to get you killed, and and I, I don't want to kill myself, you know. And of course, the whole car just went silent because I basically said no to him, you know. Right. And, and in the car was was did he have his security detail? Yeah. So as well? security sits in the front, so yep. just in case someone shoots from the front, they hit hit yep. them first. And yeah, he has right. security on either side, and um, he has a couple of hangers on that sit in the other back, the back seats. So, right. Yeah. So we're sort of surrounded by them, you know, and. Yep. Uh, so then I said, look, no, we're not doing it. And mm-hmm. then um, he went quiet. The whole car went quiet. So yep. another 15 minutes, we're back at the hotel. Yep. And then his security came out and just berated me and just got into me. You, you never say no to him. And I said, well, I was going to. I was always going to because it's illegal, you know. Yep. So then anyway, he, he ended up doing that. And apart from being dangerous. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right, you know. Yeah, yeah. So then uh, all, after being brought up, this is it, I've lost the job. He came out about half an hour later. And he said, "Thank you for saying no to me," and the, you know, and and that was that's where it sort of all started for me with him, you know. And well, a lot of people probably wouldn't say no to him, right? No, no. He's so used to that. Yeah. So we've you know we're now good friends, and uh, but one of the best stories I think is is um, the Louis Vuitton story, <laughs> which um, he was buying his wife. One of his wives wanted uh, a, a bag, like a Louis yeah. Vuitton bag, yeah. and. Um, he, he sort of, you know, he's looked at me and he said, Peter, I want to go to Louis Vuitton. Mm-hmm. And I just said, no problems. I said, uh, are you going to be spending a bit? He goes, yeah, yeah, we're going to be spending quite a bit. And I said, all right. So I walked into Louis Vuitton while they were in Tiffany's, which was across the road. 
spoke to the boss and I said, listen, you need to shut the doors for this guy. He, he's about to spend quite a bit of money. And uh, she just goes, oh, no, no. And I said, trust me, he's gonna, not spending 60, 70,000. It's going to be hundreds of thousands. So uh, she spoke to her boss and they, they let, it do, let us do it. So I went across the road, said, you're more than welcome to come in. We locked the doors and he, he bought every bag that was on the, on the shelf. So we spent, I think it was about $600,000 on, on Louis Vuitton bags because she couldn't pick which bag she wanted. So, <laughs> <That's incredible. laughs> but you know, oh, before I forget the comic, oh, he, he, he loves comics as well. The soul Com- like he's in comic books, comic books, comic yeah, books. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Cause yep. he's a big yep. fan of the Flintstones. So he has a Flintstone house. And, um, what do you mean, wait, wait a sec. what do you mean? He's got a Flintstone house? He's what built a that? house in Malaysia. It's a palace, but yep. it's, 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 um, based on the Flintstone house you know, out of the cartoon. Right, but it's. Can, uh, it, 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 can we have a look at this online? Is it online? Uh, there's it there's some photos. It's a bit private, um, yeah. but it the the roof itself was it's all little mosaic tiles, and it took uh, I think eleven years to build the just put the roof on with the mosaic tile. He had them out of India, so wasn't he building a house in Perth as well? Yeah, he's still yeah still being built. Forty million dollar house here in Perth on in Dalkeith. How, how often does he come to Perth? Uh Probably now, well, now he hasn't been for a while because of COVID, yeah, but yeah. when he was coming, it was once a month. Right. So he loves Perth that much. What, he what, loves what, Perth. What is it about, I mean, I love Perth too, but what is it about Perth that he likes? Yeah, he, he well, all the kids went to school here. They actually came to, they went to school in Perth. Right. And, uh, but he just loves the weather. Just, just loves it. He, he likes the relaxed, you know, when, when he's in Malaysia, it's not, um, like he can't go anywhere in Malaysia because he has to have of course. You know, yeah. everything. Like yeah. full security where here, he can walk around the street. No one knows who he is, you know? Yeah, right. So, um, but... And so you, were, so you were saying that he likes comic books. And what happened with that? Yeah, so we, we've gone into Hay Street and um, he said, Pete, I want to buy some comics. Mm-hmm. And I said, look, I know there's a store in the, in the mall, Hay Street Mall. Yeah. And uh, so walked in there, I went into the guy, I said, mate, I've, I've got a quite an important person with me. I said, he, he wants to buy some comics. We need to shut the doors again. So he's, you know, he's entourage. Everyone, there's about thirty people in this store, and uh, <laughs> and I'm just, I'm looking at him, and he's getting all the like limited edition stuff, like the really expensive stuff. Yeah. And he just goes, you know what? Let's just buy the whole shop, the whole shop. So he bought the whole shop, and he, he cleaned it out. Like um, he spent like eighty nine thousand dollars on comics. And <laughs> but the funny thing is. Two weeks later, he came back and did the same thing. <laughs> what, in the same store? Same store. I rang the guy. I said, he's back. And he goes, oh, fantastic. So he stocked up two of everything. So he didn't have to He didn't have to shut down for a couple of weeks. And now that guy from the comic book store rings me all the time. So when's he coming back? <laughs> yeah, right. And, and, and so you, so you, what, you go, so you go, when he comes, when he arrives, you go and pick him up at the airport, you know? Well, you, you, do you, do you I mean, do they trust you? Uh, you know, with the bags? What, what, oh, definitely. Like so the, the first time I met him, I picked up the yeah. bag with the money, which had about $12 million in it. I didn't know yeah. that at the time. So it's like a briefcase. I picked yeah. it up and I got jumped on, like by all this security. Because <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't, had no idea what was in it. And then, yeah. uh, so, you know, that's the sort of what they're bringing into Perth. But then, of course, now I can, I, I pretty much look after all his luggage and stuff like that, you know. So it's, um, but that's what he's like. It's just, you know, once he gets your trust, he'll let you do whatever you want. Yeah, it's incredible about the, the amount of money that these guys spend. Yeah. And that's I mean, every time he comes. It's not just the one off. It's every yeah. time he comes because he was buying boats. He was buying three luxury boats that time for his kids, as you do. <laughs> you know, Tammy buys buy houses. Malaysia. He buys boats. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing, Pete. Man, it's been great talking to you. I mean, I, I, I'm glad that you've been able to share. I know there's a lot of other stories that you can't share with us because. Um, you know, you got you got gag orders on you know on your contracts, and, and and I respect that. You know, you can't do that, and, and thanks for, you know, um, for respecting the artist because you know ultimately, uh, you know that's what it's about. Have you got one? Um, have you got one last story that you can tell us? Yeah, I, I I had this like it was an international comedian that had come over, um, right. huge comedian, and um, I was so looking forward. He's one of my favourites, and. Yeah. Um, I, I was driving into Bunbury. He was doing a show at the Entertainment Centre in Bunbury. And um, I was thinking, oh, this, this is going to be great. He's my idol, you know. And I picked him up from the airport. And I thought, oh, we're going to have a great chat down to Bunbury. And, and then he gets in the car. He falls asleep. 
as soon as he gets to the car, he falls asleep all the way there and all the way back. So and you, and you wouldn't believe who it was. Who? It was you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> no, mate. We love you. Love you. But I'm thinking, like, international. You know, I'm thinking, who the hell is he talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember you telling me this story. <laughs> I do remember sleeping. I do oh. remember sleeping all the way to, to, to Bunbury and back. Yeah. Sorry, mate. That's all right, mate. We still I love I hope you. I've made it up in other ways over the years. Oh, you have. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> You've made me laugh. That's amazing. <laughs> Pete, thank you very much, mate. You've been uh, great to have a chat to. I uh, appreciate you uh, telling us your stories. Hey, a bit of a lighthearted podcast because we talk about all kinds of things. We've got health and wellness. So you would have heard John Aloisi's story. Yeah, definitely. You know, we've got people talking about the inside of the gut. We've got, we've got people talking about all kinds of things. So we wanted to have something a little bit lighthearted. Uh, thanks very much for making it happen, mate. No worries. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. I hope they enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Joe.